Technology and Livelihood Education. Agriculture and Fishery Arts for Grade 7. Our topic is Feeding Management of Poultry and Livestock. Week 7 Part 2 The following are the content standard and performance standard for this lesson. Here are the learning competency and objectives of this lesson. Our topic is Feeding Management of Poultry and Livestock Feeding Facilities for Goat and Sheep The Feeding Troughs Feeding troughs should be trapezoidal or semi-cylindrical. It should have a department of 180 mm to 250 mm by 300 mm. It shall be raised off the ground at least 150 mm to keep the animals. Hay racks shall be diagonal or vertical slats with a minimum spacing of 130 mm. Hay racks shall be properly positioned and designed to avoid risk of injury. The following figures present the side view and front view of the feeding racks. The recommended linear feed space is shown on the following table. Here are some examples of goat feeding trough. The drinking trough. Water facility. For an open tank drinking system, 300 mm space is required for each 15 to 25 heads. For automatic watering systems, one bowl or nipple shall be provided for every 50 heads. The watering devices shall be situated where water is easily drained. For free range, the apron around the waterers shall be paved or packed with gravel at least 750 mm width. Here are some examples of goat drinking trough. The goat milking area. Milking area shall be separated from where the goats are kept and shall be provided with a milking stall. Here are some examples of goat milking area. The suggested flushing rations for you. Suggested flushing rations for you include good mix of pasture of legumes and grasses, a grass pasture and 150 gram of wheat bran per head per day. Grass 25 pasture and 250 gram of grains and 450 gram of oil cakes. Legume hay full fed and 100 gram of wheat bran and 150 to 200 gram of grain. And green fodder at 10% of body weight and 150 to 200 gram of concentrate per head per day. Suggested flushing rations for pregnant you. Suggested flushing ration for early and mid-pregnancy you include graze on a good pasture, 1-2 kg sorghum silage and legume hay of 1-2-1 kg head per day. Add libidum supply of maize and 50 gram of oil cakes per head per day. Grazing on stubbles and harvested fields supplemented with 100 gram of oil cakes per head per day. Feeding rams for breeding. Rams in normal condition require some additional nutrients during the breeding season. An overfat ram needs thinning before the breeding season through combination of feed reduction and vigorous exercise. Allow rams to graze with the ewes to allow them to get the same rations as the ewes. If separate feeding, it may be given 300-500 g of concentrate mixture consisting of three parts of oats or barley, one part maize and one part wheat per day. Feeding of breeding goat if the availability of pasture is good, there is no need to supplement concentrate mixture. In poor grazing conditions animals may be supplemented with concentrate mixture at 150 to 350 gram of concentrate per animal per day. The digestible crude protein level of the concentrate mixture used in the adult is 12%.
Types of feeding management. First is the extensive grazing. Extensive grazing involves letting sheep or goats in the entire pasture and leaving them there for the whole season. Next is the rotational grazing method. It is done when pasture land is divided by temporary fences into several sections. The animals are moved from one section to another section. Once the entire pasture is grazed, the first section will have sufficient grass cover to provide second grazing. This method controls parasitic infestations to a great extent. It also provides good quality fodder. Further, this system lets lambs graze first and brings in ewes to finish up the feed left by the lambs. And the semi-intensive. Semi-intensive is a combination of extensive and intensive systems due to limited grazing. It involves extensive management but controlled grazing. It consists of stall feeding, shelter at night 26 under shed and 3 to 5 hours daily grazing and browsing on pasture and range. However, this method implicates more feed cost. Here is the daily nutrient requirement for meat producing goats. The feeding facilities for cattle. The following are the feeding facilities for cattle. First is the feeding troughs. It shall be placed along the sides of the pen and should either be made of wood or concrete. It shall have horizontal rail to prevent animals from stepping the trough. The height of the horizontal rail shall be 0.7 m for up to 6 months calves, while for 7 months calves is 0.9 m. For yearling, heifer, dry, and milking cows is 1 to 2 meter. The inside surfaces of the feeding trough should be smooth and it should have rounded corners to facilitate cleaning. The bed of the trough should be 0.15 meter above the level of the apron to facilitate natural feeding stance. For calves up to one year, the dimension of the feed trough shall be 0.25 meter depth, 0.4 to 0.65 meter bottom width, and 0.65 to 0.85 meter top width. For older animals, the dimension of the feed trough shall be 0.4 meter depth, 0.45 to 0.7 meter bottom width, and 0.7 to 0.9 top width. The linear feeding space for dairy cattle is shown on the table below. If the feeding trough is separated from the shed or pen, concrete or gravel packed aprons along the feeder shall be constructed and shall be at least 1.5 meter wide and slope of 2 to 4 percent towards the drainage. The following are the linear feeding spaces per animal. Next is the storage sheds. It is used for all feedstuffs such as hay, grain, mineral salt shall be provided to keep it dry, to protect from rodents and other animals. Here is the commonly feed ingredients for dairy animals. Feeding dairy cows. Feeding management plays a crucial role in farm economy because feed alone constitutes 60% of the production cost of milk. The nutrient requirement should be determined for maintenance as well as for milk production to meet the fat percentage in milk and gestation. Thus, it needs computation. Dry matter from roughage should not exceed 2% of cow's live weight nor should it be less than 1%. The recommended nutrient inclusions for cattle. It should have major minerals which include phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and chlorine. Microminerals include iron, copper, zinc, manganese, cobalt, selenium, thyroid, fluorine, and vitamins include vitamin A, D, E, K, and C. The table below shows the feeding allowances for cattle. The pig feeding management. The swine feeding. Swine are monogastric animals that can utilize fibrous food only to a limited extent. Part of the protein diet of pigs comes from animal sources. They should be fed on a regular basis. Fresh feed should be put only after removal of the previous feed from the feed trough. 
Swill feeding is recommended for commercial pigs. They require 4 to 8 kilograms per day. All categories of pigs can be given small quantities of fodder, or they may be pastured to graze grasses. Ad libitum feeding may be practiced for weaned pigs to avoid post-weaning weight depression. Below are the nutrient requirement of breeding stock. The nutrient requirement of growing stock. Below are the list of other feeds used for feeding. Feeding boars. A breeding board requires 2-2.5 kg concentrate per 100 kg weight. Feed allowances should be either fat or run down. Greens should be provided if they are raised indoors. Year-round pasture is excellent if it can provide physical exercise and valuable nutrients. Feeding female, there is a demand for nutrients resulting from pregnancy to ensure lactation. The increased needs are intended for proteins, vitamins, and minerals. They gain 30 to 35 kg and gilts 40 to 45 kg during pregnancy. There should be regulation of feed so that they will never get fat or thin. Individual feeding is required. Flushing is a practice of giving extra feed to sows and gilts from one to two weeks prior to mating and returns to normal feeding after mating. Feeding of farrowing sow and litter, feed them lightly with bulky laxative feed. Bring the sow to full feeding in 10 days. Greens should be provided. Feed allowance is 2.5 to 3 kg per 100 kg body weight at a rate of 0.2 kg per piglet with the sow. Thus, a 100 kg sow should receive 4.6 kg feed per day. The piglets may be provided with a special nourishing diet called creep feed. Creep feeding. Creep feeding is a self feeding concentrate to piglets. This should be given when they are two weeks old. Each can consume about 10 kg feed before reaching the age of eight weeks. Feeding of growing and finishing pigs. The pigs may be given complete feed they can consume to attain maximum growth. They must be fed on a regular basis twice to thrice a day. On average, the post-weaning feed conversion efficiency is 4. As fattening progresses, protein percent in ration may be decreased. This period may be considered from weaning 9 to 10 kg to the slaughterhouse weight of 90 to 100 kg. Feeding Orphan Pigs Piglets should be immediately shifted to a foster mother when a sow dies or fails to produce milk or does not claim her pigs. Swill feeding refers to the practice of feeding pigs with leftover food scraps or waste food, often from human meals or food processing. These scraps may include various types of food waste, such as vegetables, grains, meat, dairy products, and other edible food remnants. The following are the feed, veterinary inputs, and water for chickens. First, the chicken should be provided with adequate, safe, and clean feed that would allow them to meet their optimum nutrition level. They should be provided with a daily feeding schedule or routine. Second, Farm owners should acquire feed from suppliers who follow good manufacturing practices and or good hygiene practices that conforms with the quality and standards set by regulatory bodies. Third, procedures on on-farm manufacture feeds should minimize contamination. Fourth, farm owners should use ingredients from authorized suppliers. Records of purchases should be kept. Seek assistance from experts if necessary. Fifth. The feed mixing equipment should be always kept clean and have a regular preventive maintenance schedule. Sixth, the feed chain should be well managed to prevent feed from contamination. Then, feeds and veterinary inputs should be kept in a designated area under good ventilation. And finally, there should be a good record keeping procedure that includes the following, supplier, type of feed or supplements, quantity, 
declaration of ingredients, document of feed analysis, date of delivery, and date of manufacturing and batch number. On the right is the table of ration of layer mash. In conclusion, effective feeding management in poultry and livestock is a vile aspect of successful farming. By tailoring feed to the specific needs of different species and production stages, farmers can improve productivity, reduce costs, and enhance animal health. Regular monitoring, adapting to changing conditions, and using high-quality, well-balanced feed are keys to optimizing the performance and welfare of the animals. A time to remember. This is Teacher Mylene. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.